good. You good? Yeah, I have like composed myself. Okay. Okay. Um, hello everyone. Welcome back. Welcome. Welcome to our podcast. It's good to be back. It's been a little while. I feel like a lot's happened since the last time we talked. Yeah, what's happened, Sarah? <laughs> I have had a really good holiday. I passed my exams. I got a new job for next year. Everything's coming up Millhouse. It's all happening. Yes. So we've got a lot to celebrate. Yeah. And where else did you go? I went on holiday for four weeks, which is pretty wild. I went to Mexico for three weeks and Guatemala for one week. I um, had a lot of uh, tacos. I had a like, really great time and I also got some acquisitions. Which I'm excited to show you. I after. am so excited because Sarah came over last night and it was the first time I'd seen her since she got back. And I really, 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 really wanted her to tell me all about it and she just kind of refused. <laughs> I feel like that's not and, quite. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Okay, Did you fine. tell me? Did no, I ask? No. Did you tell me? No. I think basically now this podcast, as much as I love doing it, it's putting a bit of a divide in the friendship. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I still, I don't know, you know. I feel like there's some times where I'm like, should I just tell you in... Or should I wait and tell you? Okay, so she actually waited. So waited. we're all going to find so, out together. And now you've really hyped it, so just so you don't... Yeah, this is the problem. It's not actually that exciting. But anyway. Um, my life updates. Not much. Still studying. Uh, still working. <laughs> doing a new job. Um, still in paediatrics, but at a different hospital with lots of babies. And that's fun. But it's a lot of hours. So my progress hasn't been as good as it could be. But that's okay. But that's life. That's life. Anyway, excited to talk to you all about it. What are you wearing? I'm wearing my Sailor Swift tank. Um, it. Yes, it's midwinter, but actually it's not too cold today. Um, so I feel like it's a bit silly wearing like a summer cotton tank in August, but here we are. I wanted to wear it because it's like my most recent finished object. It's really cute. Um, so yeah, it's a, this is by Kuta Bakika, who is Veronica Lindbergh. Um, it's just like a scoop in tank so neat um it's i mean it's not it's not as bad as other tanks that exist in terms of like bra considerations but it does scoop enough that you need to be mindful but it's not like that um is it camisole number five yeah the one which is like and it's like super narrow yeah. at the front and you basically have to wear a strapless bra if you're going to wear a bra it's not yeah. as bad as that but it's a bit scoopy um, 10 centimetres of negative ease. Yeah, how did you feel about that? Because you talked about I that in the bit, last video. Yeah, it's fine. Like, obviously, it's not too tight, but it's snug. Um, but yeah, no shaping, but that doesn't really... No, it's not. It so. looks okay. Um, and a cute awesome. little twisted rib at the bottom. Cute. I did this in Rowan Cotton Glace. Nice. I feel like I have... I, I feel like every few, every so often, I'm like, oh, I made another thing in Rowan Cotton Glace. In Rowan Cotton Glace. In Rowan Cotton Glace. Because at some point, a few years ago, I bought like Heaps. 20, tw like so much that, and I'm just slowly chipping away through. That's so interesting. So this was a good one to use for it, actually. I've never looked at the Rowan Cotton. I always thought it was yeah, passe, would but I could be saying oh, it wrong. Look, I'm probably I don't sure. know, but I've never looked at it and thought, you know what, I got to stock up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I think I was just like dazzled by the potential color options. Yeah, and now right. I have a stupid amount of it left. I did used to when I first started knitting. I had only ever been to this one yarn shop, which was in the city. It's called Morrison Sons, and they have a lot of Rowan. And it's funny because they have like their own brand of Morrison Sons on one side, and then they have on the other side like a Rowan corner, mm. and it's like the bougie luxe corner. And so I was kind of similar in that, like, I bought quite a bit of Rowan. And now that I found all these other fun yarns, I kind of just don't really touch it anymore. I and I don't even, see I, the hype, which is weird, because I, I used can't to imagine love it. ever buying Rowan. I'm like, yeah. surely there's better options out there. Anyway, I'm not wearing a hand knit thing, obviously, but this, in case you were wondering, is from Gorman. It's a, uh, <laughs> just a regular jumper from Gorman, which I don't know, I think Gorman's Australian, but it's like yeah. very Melbourne vibe. Very. Should we start with some uh, finished objects? Let's do finished objects. Do you want to start? Uh, sure. I have only one finished object, but remember how last time I said, guys, that I was in my sock era? She wasn't kidding. <laughs> She'd be making socks. So I made these socks. They're just a pair of vanilla socks. But the reason I wanted to make them was because I wanted to get back into sock knitting. And also, I just love, like, the fun colours. Um... And yeah, I started it off with this colour, which is just like a random little mini skein from Al of Athena. Because when, like I hadn't started knitting the body yet, and I hadn't really thought about what colour I wanted to match it. In hindsight, I would have just done this mustard colour, but I kind of found it in my stash later. 
I think I talked so, you into that Navy. I was like, this will be lovely. You did. And then you were like, not into it. But you know what? It's <laughs> fine. I just like a little bit of contrast and I quite like it. Yeah. And yeah, so I finished both. They're blocked. They've actually been worn a fair bit. So like, that's why you can see a fair bit of pilling. Um, but we'll just ignore the pill. So this is actually the Javol yarn. Um, that's also sold at Maker Maker. And the coolest thing about the Javul is it comes with like a little spool inside of reinforcement thread. And I think you're actually, when it's over the heel and toe, you're actually meant to hold it together. But I didn't really think about it at the time. I think in future maybe I would for reinforcement purposes. It has pilled like a fair bit around the heel though. Yeah. Anyway, that's okay. It's so thing. neat. I'm just like, uh, this is like the most perfect knitting you've ever seen. Oh um, my god. And then the body of the sock is made out of Red and Ollie Hold the Mustard sock yarn. I truly believe the Red and Ollie sock yarns are the coolest colours. I love them. I think they look so good. Um, this is the first one I've made that I've like worn since knitting it. I feel like it's felted a bit, but honestly, yeah. I don't really care about felting socks because I think like it kind of makes them blend better or something, like I less like stitch, it's defi stitch like definition. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not important to me in socks stitch definition, so it's okay. Jumpers I care about, but on socks I don't. I feel like it's just a marker of how well loved they are. Yeah. It's like it's just a testament to the fact that it's a utility item. Exactly. Which I like. Also, the other thing I like about socks is I can like wear them all the time without feeling like I'm wearing the same jumper all the time. Yeah, true, true, true. Look at me just talking about like this is why you should wear socks. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another reason why um I like knitting socks, or I've decided I'd like knit knitting socks again. The pattern I used was just the I'm so basic sock pattern from Summerly Knits, which I had another one that I just found that was a free one on Ravelry as well, um which I used to use. But I actually like the way she does it. She kind of catered, like she explains her rationale behind every step. It's super um, beginner friendly. And she also caters towards people who knit Magic Loop. And these mm. are the first socks that I've knitted with Magic Loop. Before this, I used to always use two tiny little needles, but I feel like it's easier on my hands. So I wanted to try something different. And I use this Xiaogu needles set. Um, I was knitting on 2.5 millimeters. But I've since changed to 2.25 millimeter needles on my future socks, which you'll see soon. Um, I'm a tight knitter, so mm. when I know everyone knits on 2.25, I just thought it's no brain. I'll go to 2.5. But I prefer a tightly knit, very neat sock. I get a lot of satisfaction out of it, so I'm gonna just do that in future. Um, and I might just need to knit up a size. Which is fine. To, but yeah. to accommodate the fact that you've gone, gone down you're a little. Such a tight knitter. Yeah, I'm yeah, just a enough. tight knitter as Makes well. Sense. But I like the look of the fabric more. And it doesn't feel stiff. And even if it does, like it kind of holds up the stock socks yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, it make, it'll make they wear longer. Yes. That's yeah. so funny about what you say about Summer Lee. Because Why? the socks that I'm working on at the moment, which I've forgotten to bring, so um, they're also by Summer Lee. Oh, called, she has cool patterns. Yeah. Socks. But the one thing that I thought about her patterns was. She's so she's so good at explaining it and she has all this like rationale and I feel like yeah. even the way like the pattern I'm following for the hibernal socks, it's got like five centimeters of one by one rib and she kind of apologizes in the pattern. She's like, Look, I'm really sorry guys. I know you might think that this is crazy, but I really love one by one rib. You can obviously leave it shorter. Yeah. Or like I, I think like she's just it. like really casual and supportive and they're great patterns. And, I think yeah. I think it makes us a little bit more pers like personal mm -hmm. or personal. I don't know how to explain it when you read those kind of things in the pattern. And just also like a little friend just yeah. like explaining it to you. Also I don't know, I think I'm a bit of a stubborn child at heart. I don't really love people telling me what to do and so when I'm reading a pattern and I see something stupid I kind of just get a bit crabby but when it's got a little justification I'm sort of like okay I see where you're coming from and it kind of gives me the option of ignoring it or not whereas sometimes I ignore it and then regret it later yeah well she totally is like do what you want but, yeah which I it's it's a nice I appreciate style it. of pattern I yeah actually, it's yeah. good yeah it's good. Um, yeah, it's very well explained. Like, even where there are decreases and stuff, she'll say, you know, this is for the instep of your foot, or now we're going to decrease yeah. it because we want to decrease it to the same number of stitches that we had before. You just increase all these stitches. Like, she, yeah, she's like, very that's good. Right. I, I've not seen, I've not looked at that pattern before, but my sense is that would be like if your first sock, that would yes. be a good one. Yes, first sock would recommend. It's also a free pattern. It's very oh, well written. Love that. Um, and then she has lots of other patterns which you pay for. Um, but I'm sure they'd be as good. I've bought some. I just haven't actually made them yet. I bought the pattern, but pattern made them. But yeah, 
Well, I've they're got really one. cute. I've, made, I've started my first summer Lee socks and I'm very impressed. So, yeah. Yes. This is going to be sock heavy, I'm just realizing. I'm excited. Real sock heavy. So, my first finished object, so I've, my only finished objects are socks because I was traveling and I didn't oh, so take true. anything bulky. So, my first. They're finished beautiful. Object is these socks. This is that yarn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, so these are the Simple Garter Rib Socks. And they are by Belinda, who is Here I Knit on Instagram. Yes, yeah, she is. And this is a free pattern that she has recently made. And it's like a three by one garter like a three by one rib sock, but it's um, uh, yeah, free pattern and they're really comfy and yeah. I'm really impressed by this pattern. It was really like enough to keep it going and yeah. The inside's like quite cool, like the texture is quite cool. Anyway, the inside. Yeah, like I that's true. Yeah, and I know that's a, just a small thing, but I like them a lot. I love a broken rib. This is broken rib, right? But, now, it, but it, the rib is created with a garter stitch, so they're not as sucking like they yeah. don't constrict as much yeah which I'm, I'm into actually i'm into it too so there's two variations on this pattern there's one where it's like a three by one and one where it's like maybe a six or seven by one so you've got a bit of variation in how much i want to make these i've decided yeah. i'm making these it's a good pattern. also you can t kind of see because i remember the this one had like the little bronze bits in it i was gonna say it's so subtle like i can't actually i think really it's not worth it, it. Yeah. i'm really underwhelmed by the stellina in it because like it was fun it looked great when it was in the skein but I don't like I had to really like I have to really look and even then I don't see sparkle I just see a little black hairs I'm not I'm not sold I think it's hype because I feel like all of a sudden there was Stellina everywhere and actually I don't think it's have you worn them yet yeah does it does the Stellina cause any itch factor not 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 really okay that was the only thing I was wondering it's got good drape which I know we don't care about for socks but like yeah <laughs> I mean, it's probably because I knitted it. Oh no, I did this on a 2.25, but I'm a really loose knitter, so. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, these are the Simple Garter Rib Socks by Belinda from here. I knit. Oh, I'm not sh Anyway, I'll link the Ravelry Thank pattern you. page. Um, I'm going to find it too. That's now. a good one. <laughs> and this was in the Owl of Athena sock gown, which we bought a few months ago, and I was like, oh, I need to knit this because I don't know, I don't want to have pink yarn hanging around you don't want to no it just seemed weird for me i like it just seems silly that i had it in the first place but I, what? it's not even pink it's like a ready orange anyway i'll show you pink later <laughs> that's not pink <laughs> nice um have you got any other finished things um i've got like a half finished i've got a finished sock doesn't oh, yeah. count doesn't count okay well i'll do my other finished socks yeah yeah, yeah. ready Oh, you did it! Wait, wait, explain. What have we done? Tell me. Okay, so. Walk through it. Walk through it. I don't know if I. Congratulations, first. Thank you. I don't. Thank they're, you. they're like, I really like hyped that enough. They look amazing. <laughs> so, these are the intersection socks from 52 Weeks of Socks. Uh, I can't remember if I left in the bit in our last few videos where I complained about how much trouble I was having with these socks or if I was just so triggered you by it that I was like. Cut it out. I can't. Because I remember this. telling you, like in the moment, I was like, "Oh, what about your socks?" And you're like, "No, it's not going in." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, I wasn't ready. No, nah, it's not. About it's it. not going in this video. I was sort of like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. <laughs> we won't talk about it then. <laughs> okay, we can now talk about it. We can now talk about it. So, I initially started this pattern, and I basically ignored all the instructions. I did a different needle size on. Uh, I went down a needle size because I was like, oh, "I want a tight, snug sock." And I did a size which in hindsight was too small for me. Um, and then I couldn't get it over my foot. Yeah, right. And then I kept trying to salvage the work that I'd done. And I was like, oh, I'll just like knit from the top down and graft them together. And that didn't work. And it looked ridiculous. And I kept trying. I spent so much time trying to save the lip. Like, because I'd done sort of the toe up to about here. And then I kept trying to save it to save the work that I'd done. And in the end, I just gave up and ripped the whole thing back. And it was like a much better way of redoing. Like I should have just stopped trying to, yeah. It's okay. I feel like we've all been there. We all think, do we frog it? Do we try and salvage it? Or do we frog it? Or do we just live with the mistake? Yeah. I'm a huge frog advocate. 
I am too now. Like all the fussing around I did with these and in the end we're it's here made for a process and anyway. usual pair of socks. Like we're not here to if we wanted just a pretty pair of socks you could just buy it. That's true, yeah. Exactly. Like anyway. And that's just my two cents. Yeah. So in high <laughs> like the moral so of the story is just do it properly. Follow the instructions of the smart person who's written the pattern. <laughs> that's the thing, like as well when I said before, <laughs> oh like I like being told what to do. Um I'm sorry, in what <laughs> world do I think? Like Then you know what you're doing. Yeah, like obviously people are professional. Uh, and very experienced, and here I am coming in with my two cents sort of, you know, oh yeah, I've just like knit a handful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway. So I did these in the Regia Premium Sock oh. Wool, which is, has a component of yak in it. Interesting. Mm. I really, really love this colour. Where did you get the, actually, like where did you buy the yarn from? Morris and Sons. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then it's got this fun cable up the front, which is really simple. But, okay, so my one thing that I did change in the pattern was these are a toe-up sock and I, and I don't care for the cast-off edge with a toe-up sock. Okay. So, like, these ones, which I'm currently wearing, are a toe-up sock. These are Ren and Ollie. Yes, yep. Yeah. But it, like, it flares out. Sorry, it's a yeah, really yeah, weird yeah. angle. But basically, it's not a good yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. So what I did was with these, I knit them as per pattern all the way up and then... I left these stitches on hold and then I cast on. Of course did, you did. And then did the ribbing down and then grafted at this point. It's the most sorry, sorry <laughs> thing I've I ever just, heard. I just really love grafting and I love You love a provisional cast on. <laughs> I knew that that's where this was going to go. Um, it's so satisfying though because you have the, you have the tools to cr do things as you want. <laughs> And to be a little bit more creative with how you You're get so together. You're so chuffed and it kind I'm of annoys so me. I'm so happy. <laughs> and I, mainly I'm happy because it worked. Like, I think you can't yeah. tell. No, you can't. And I think, it like, good. it's sort of blocked out even better. But look at this, like... Um, <laughs> uh, look that at this. cinch. That cinch. That cinch. cinch. <laughs> that cinch. Because, like, I Such like this. Cinch. Yeah. So I'm really happy with this. Normally I like cuff down socks. Yeah. But I think if you were following a pattern that you should follow... Or you were nervous about how much yarn you were going to need, and you want which in which case you do a toe up sock. But look, I'm going to I don't know. I'm giving you a hard time. I would do the exact same thing. I've a hundred percent considered doing that with like when I'm not sure if I want to like do a contrast. Like I was thinking about undoing this, thinking like oh I wanted a different contrast edge at the top. Yeah, like those kind of things. Yeah. But alas, like whatever. Yeah. I understand. But it's a good idea. Yeah, I'm really happy. I'm into it. I will probably do it at some stage too. Yeah, I just like to prick fun when I can. Look, fair enough. Um, I did the larger size. I did them on the recommended needle, which was a 2.5. The issue, I think, was the cabling cinched it in. Yeah. Um, so Belinda from Here I Knit, I think, gave me some, the recommendations. She's like, just go up a needle size and go up a sock size. And I was like, yes, I should do what wow. the pattern says. What a revelation. Life-changing. Life-changing. Do you have more socks? That's all. And then I've got the ones which I didn't bring today, so we'll have to save them. Next right. Time. Okay. Okay. Well, I have... Let's see your next sock. <laughs> it's not blocked, so it looks a bit ugly. Um, but I have one of two socks done. Mm. Of, sorry, I have another <laughs> classic me not doing the... I don't. Like, surely you would have taken more effort to put this yeah, through no. than to just do finish the sock. I needed the needle for a different project. Actually, I didn't even need the needle. I needed the cable for a different project. So, this is me being stubborn. <laughs> anyway, I've got this sock. This is another vanilla sock. Um, I've just been exploring the vanilla sock vibe. Uh, is this the same one, the, the basic, the Summerlee one? Yeah, but I made a few changes to try oh, and yes. optimize. So, this is a Summerlee basic sock. But I was trying to look at, like, different heel flap types. And so, this is the eye patronage heel, which is... I don't know if you can really appreciate it. Oh, that's sunlight. I'm showing you that. Um, so I did an eye patch heel. I did a two by one rib. I think I can't remember. She, I think she says two by one or two point by two rib. But anyway, I love a two by one rib, mm, and then cute. a nice cast on, which is like I think the Icelandic cast on or German. Or the German one, German twisted. It's German mm. twisted. German twisted cast on, one by two. Just some stockinette. I increased a couple of stitches here because here's my thing with socks. I feel like they're often a bit too big 
but then I'm really scared of a tight sock. And I think the thing is I actually have a really narrow foot, but a long foot. And I didn't really think about the fact that you could just make it longer while keeping the same <laughs> diameter. Alas, my aim is to have like a bit more cinch here and a bit more cinch in the instep, but then have enough room over the fourth, like the top of your foot, because that's where the stitches tend to be stretched Stretch out, out when I wear it. So I started off as like a size small up to here, then I increased just a couple of stitches here, which you can like kind of see there, like if you look quite like closely. Um, and then that made it like a medium size or something, I think, I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was medium size, like a 64 stitch diameter. And then I did my own eye of Patrick heel, then I did the decreases back to a small size. So basically from here to here is a medium size. And then I also, <laughs> this is going to be so fun to recreate on the second sock when I <laughs> leave it for long enough and don't remember what I did. Um, and then for the actual foot component, I went down to a 2.25 millimeter needle, which as I said, I think is a little bit neater and a little bit more the fabric that I like. So as I said, this is unblocked. Looks so, like, but it looks I think it looks, it looks, so it looks nice. Like it looks neat. This still looks nice, but I can see, I can see a subtle difference. And I was trying to do a little bit of research of like things you can do to optimize and perfect your socks. And a lot of people recommend reducing your needle size on the foot bit just to improve the wear. So that's what I did. Makes sense. In terms of the yarn that I used, this is Ren and Ollie um, in Nymph, which I love. It's probably my favorite um, colorway from them. It's like a lime green with this hot pink in it. And it was actually... The reason I bought it is because one of my friends, Anthea, she kind of got me into knitting in the first place. Have I told you this? I don't think so. So she got I me- I didn't know that about Anthea. Well, I had kind of knit as a kid. Oh, Jacob's here. I'm embarrassed. Why? Close the door. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear about Hi, Jacob. Unless it's Bishra. Hello? It's Bishra. Oh, I'm less embarrassed. <laughs> Get over I'm the... a video. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so um, I used to knit as a kid with my grandma who taught me, and then I kind of just didn't touch it again. And then when I was in medical school, and the uh, we had this like weird toot where it was before we started internships, and they were saying how you know when you guys are interns, you're going to have to teach medical student things medical students things about medicine so we're doing a workshop where you learn how to teach people things oh, that's nice yeah that's a good idea. and i taught people how to do winked eyeliner lol and <laughs> anthea <laughs> and anthea taught us how to knit and i'll never forget as we were doing it i was thinking man this is exactly my kind of hobby like i vibe this i want to do this again but i am also quite a hobby enthusiast and i thought i don't want to commit too hard because it's very next, me next exactly it's very me to go too hard and then leave everything never touch it again so I went to the closest yarn store on my way home which was Morrison Sons by the city um, went there bought a pair of four millimeter needles and a baby alpaca two skines of wool and started the client sweater which you guys oh, saw last, last time. time yeah 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 and then knitted it and it was a flat knit in the flat and I hated that and I never went back to knitting in the flat after that but basically loved it anyway back to where this was going <laughs> in the beginning of the story this is when Anthea and I were becoming closer friends and she randomly purchased for me from Make a Maker a Ren and Ollie skein of hand dyed yarn which is my first hand dyed yarn skein ever and she bought it for me for us to make hot water bottle covers together oh if you that's one you still got yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. it's in the same colorway it's in nymph and she just knows me very well and it's just a basic like no pattern, just stock in it, hot water bottle cover, which is super that's cute. That's a good pattern. I think that's pretty it, it is. The I don't remember where I got the pattern from, but it no, is. No, it's the it's the make and make. Is it the make and make yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. It is made it, made it free. It it's it's perfect. It's great. And actually, it would be nice to be able to like transpose color work onto it very yeah, easily. Actually, to be honest with the right. grid. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, besides the point, it was great. Loved the colors. I put a hot pink water bottle inside of it that pricks at the top, which I think is really cute. And then I bought the matching sock yarn with the idea of making exactly these socks. So like the nymph with the hot pink. Um, the hot pink, I have mild regrets about 
when I purchased and using this hot pink yarn, but I knew I didn't have to use much of it. I actually bought. I don't mind it. that. It's I mean, more, it, it works with this. It works, but it was just unnecessarily expensive for what I'm using. But anyway, True. essentially, this is from Melbourne City Dye Works. I think it's called Shocking Pink, and I bought it for a different project, so I have a fair bit of it. And the reason I bought it was to make a the spot sweater by Anne Bensel. Oh yeah. And this was going to be the contrast color, and then I had like a neutral color base. I detest that pattern. I'm going to go back to it and try it again, but so far I hated the pattern. I just like threw it in the corner. I haven't touched it since. And I should have just got some Javal, just basic yarn instead of hand dyed hot pink for the top and bottom, but I just had it and so I just used what you have. Exactly. So anyway, I'm using this. At least I'm using it. Um, so that's that one, and I need to cast on it the second one, but yeah. I'm impressed at your like finessing to make like the perfect sock <laughs> like it's the detail well, is quite like I, impressed. I think it's also because I had just made a pair of socks and then mm. I cast on these immediately after so I had a little bit of uh what's the word I felt a little bit more inspired to make it to be creative to improve to, to tweak it. especially because I feel like if you get the perfect sock pattern for your foot you then you're done. Yeah, yeah exactly. like every sock is perfect after that. Yeah, so that was my that was my plan. I feel like I'm still working towards the perfect, the perfect sock. sock. I think it's very doable when you have vanilla socks, but I don't think you can really do it with cables. That's true. Because it should, changes things. That's true. That's true. Uh, as we have all learned. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's next? That's shaking. Where? Oh, downstairs. I thought you like spotted him out the window. Maybe. Maybe it's um, not going to talk about my hibernal socks because I didn't bring them. Sad. I've seen them though. He <laughs> um, pretty treat. Let's do my next work in progress. Yes. Which is now genuinely a work in progress because I feel like the first time I showed it, it I'm kind of nervous. This much. It is my cargo sweater. <gasps> oh, it looks so good. Oh. Um, so I have split for sleeves just. Um, and oh, then pretty. I. So this is where I'm at. This actually makes me so sad that I've cast it on something else. Anyway, sorry, we'll continue. Um, so it looks yeah. so good. This is the Cargill by Rebecca Cloud from the Cray Bayer. I love her so much. Um, <laughs> I when I do top downs, I like to do the sleeves before the body. Yeah, I do that now too. I didn't used to, and now I prefer to do it as well because then it feels like you're on the home stretch. Yeah, and also I'm more willing to accept like whatever length it happens yeah. to be in the body than the sleeves like i want sleeves to be proper length but i don't really care if there's like that Agreed. much difference in the body um and also if i don't do the sleeves then i might never do them yeah <laughs> no truly that's my main reason so anyway that's why i stopped doing the body and i was just going to do the collar before i do the sleeves yeah it's meant that we're back with old friend yarn hanging off the bottom. Oh my gosh, just cut it off. No. But someone posted, because the last time I did oh, it yeah. was with foil. That made me sick. <laughs> Why? Why just <laughs> explain? <laughs> and when I saw them write that, you were like, that is uh, so obvious. <laughs> And then, but then someone commented and being like, you should do it with a Ziploc bag instead. Ah, uh, how good is this? Um, it's a solution. <laughs> it's a better solution than the foil. So if you are not an animal and you um, don't want to weave in ex unnecessary ends, um, little snap lock bag. Look, I still don't know how I feel. <laughs> I what I probably should do is just finish these balls off and then go back to the sleeves. But. That's true, but you'll inevitably finish one before the other because you're holding two together. Oh yeah, there'll always be one. Can I ask, what colour is this? Because I want this colour now for mine. So, one of them, I can't remember which is which, I've got a the marine, so this is uh, in Knitting for Olive, Merino and... Oh, they're both Knitting for Olive. They're both Knitting for Olive. Mm. One is Dusty Artichoke and one is Dusty Sea Green but I can't remember which is which. Mm. I think this is, no, I don't know. I'll have to look. I think this is Dusty Artichoke actually, because I have Dusty Artichoke and I swear it looks like that. Yeah, well, actually I wouldn't, yeah, this is much more sea green. So anyway, Dusty Artichoke and Dusty Sea Green. Um, it's making for a really lovely contrast yeah, it's adding on some my depth little to that. dip stitches. 
Um, but yeah, this is coming along. This got put on, I feel like this was my everything. This got neglected once other things came along, like test nips. It's like this one got put this aside. Good. And now I'm back and it's cold and I want to be able to get something out of this before summer hits at the end of the year. So this one is top priority. Beautiful. No, I really love it. Um, I know I meant to talk about my next work in progress. Oh no, but let's talk about your relevant acquisition. acquisition. I'm going to talk about my relevant acquisition because it fits best. But the I, so after we went to the Bendigo Wool and Sheep Show, I think I told you guys I went with a list and I wanted to buy that yarn beautiful colour yarn to make that. And I didn't find anything that was perfect. But as soon as I got home the very next morning, I went to Black Bottle Yarn on their website and I found the perfect colour and make I wanted. They didn't have it online. I emailed them, they had it in stock. I bought it and here it is. More. Oh my I'm gosh. sorry, it's so beautiful. It's exactly what I want, like a gray, dusty, sage green it's color. It's so beautiful. And I know from knitting this already, from knitting my mom's thing that I haven't finished here, we don't talk about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's got great drape. It's made out of Mm, it's so beautiful. 60% um, so nice. merino, 20% alpaca, 20% silk. It's hand dyed on their farm. It is a single stranded like ply yarn and it's four ply fingering weight and it says sweet pea four ply black bottle yarn and fiber. It's perfect. It's, it's probably of all yarn places. This is my favorite yarn. I think like it just Ever. looks the best it's just it, drapes, so beautiful. it drapes amazingly well the only other the other thing that you've made in it did you make your the purple fortune sweater in this one no, no. that's ochre which i also oh. love okay ochre's on par but they're just they're a different vibe and they do different things um anthea has the spot sweater which she actually completed because she didn't throw a tantrum <laughs> and she knitted it in exclusively in this and some creme care soul wool and hers the drape and like the softness it's so good I was concerned, oh, I've already told you guys on the podcast this before. I was concerned about using this and pilling, but Liesl says it doesn't oh, yeah, pill. That's right. Anthea definitely hasn't pilled. And my concern for that was a single ply, but actually. Yeah, I would have thought it would be more inclined to pill. Yeah, but apparently it doesn't. Like, Liesl has shown me items in the store that she's worn heaps, and yeah. they don't have any signs of wear to them. Um, it's a little bit on the more expensive side, which I'd expect for what it is. All their stuff's hand dyed and luxurious. It's $40 a skein, but... Worth it. Worth it. It's 400 meters, I think. Yeah, 400 meters. Three of these, perfect jumper quantity for me. Stunning. It's going to be so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just need the mohair to go with it, which is why I was eyeing off yours, because I think it would be the perfect... Because, like, the shadow on this is that color. You're right. And I don't even know how it gets that, but... It's I don't know either, beautiful. but it's good. I love it. I'm excited to yeah, use it. Yeah, it's going to look great. Nice. All right. I think I only have acquisitions left as well. Should I just tell them my very quick... Oh, yeah. No, this no, is no, boring. No. This it's is boring. boring. Um, maybe we should close the door. Okay, hang on. Because <gasps> it's a gift. Right, okay. Okay. So, I don't know why I'm talking in a harsh <laughs> voice. Jacob definitely doesn't watch happy shows <laughs> my partner jacob this one time he's gonna kill me he doesn't watch them so he's gonna kill me i told him how we were making a podcast mm. i haven't told him i told him how we were making a podcast and when you put up the first episode i think i sent him a link and i remember just like being like in bed one day and i could hear him in the bathroom and i could just hear our voices and he oh was like what? so clearly just sitting on the toilet watching our video <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> I mean, I do too. I mean, I thought it was hilarious. He didn't even watch the full video though. And he watched I watched ten minutes. And yeah, like, I'm done. Pretty much. He was just like, I don't know what's happening. What's, <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> then probably put on Ko instead. But alas, <laughs> watching. The um, I am. Uh, I don't know. It's a whole sweater cursing. <laughs> yes, my previous relationship ended after I had made them a sweater. It's fine. I'm not scarred. I want to make it's a fine. sweater for it's my partner. It's his birthday coming up in like the end, end of September. And for once, I'm not leaving it to the week of and leaving it to the last minute. I bought the yarn for it with one of our giant orders from Garntopia. Um, and I bought, it's heavy merino. I thought this was our, um, was it? I oh, this no, was our charity right. buy. You're we, right, we, we sorry. We like impulse purchase from Knitting for Olive when yeah. they had their 
charity. Yeah, no, it was that. Sorry, I got mixed up. I've, it's the it's only easy, context. It's easy to get mixed up between all of the monumental European orders that we keep putting in. Yes, <laughs> and also the the only ones, the only times I've bought knitting for Olive have been in those contexts. True, true, true. So. Yeah. They now stock some colours at Sun Swan, but alas, anyway, this was before then. So this is the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino, and it's in the colour Slate Grey. It's 100% Merino, traceable, Ocatex Standard 100, I don't know what that means, and it says 50 grams to 125 metres, which I'll get to. Quite interesting. Mm. Anyway, this is what it looks like. It's just like a slate grey colour, but I like it. It's there. interesting, like it's got good good depth. Yeah, feel that good there. depth, it's cute. Love it. Can you tell I'm really enthused, guys? <laughs> so, I worked a lot of hours. I worked in like 10 days of work. I worked 118 hours, but I haven't even put in my overtime yet. So, more than that. And my treat yesterday, I'm taking the day off, I'm knitting, I'm having friends over. So I cast on, I knew the pattern I wanted to make was the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. Yeah. The man version because my partner is male or a man um and i bought the light version because i was so ready and eager to cast on i looked at the two versions and one of them's for dk and one's for worsted and i thought oh yeah this is heavy merino it's usually dk i thought it was a dk i looked at the thing 125 meters to 50 easily dk no worries and then it feels chunky it looks chunkier and then I started knitting with it, and it says to start knitting on three millimeter needles in the For pattern. the light version. For the light version. Yeah. My hands were sore. It was dense. Right. It was so tight that it was like the fabric was so stiff. And you couldn't even see the stitches because the rustic vibe of the yarn meant that they all blended together from it being so tight. And then I thought, this isn't right. And then I looked a little bit deeper. And then turns out, despite all those specs I said, it actually also says 4.5 millimeter needles is what they recommend. And 18 to 18 centimeters, like the gauge. Basically it knits, yeah. yeah, it knits as like a worsted, despite everything else like the yardage, which I mean, I guess it means, you know, you're getting really it's good value. value. Yeah. And it's going to go a really far away. I'm going to have so much left over, I think. I then subsequently went on and purchased the non-light <laughs> pattern. So now you have to. A bit crabby about it, but that's okay. Anyway, it's just, it just was a sour start to the big... I feel like I've gone really negative. It was a sour start to the project. Yeah, I was saying, like, you've got a long way to go. You can't be hating on the project. I hate it. I actually hate it. This is how much I've done. I hate it. I, I just feel really like... I think once you get into the stock net, you will just be like, it will fly and you'll be loving life. I think that's it too. Like at the moment, it's all one by one rib. I hate one by one rib. It's just yeah. annoying to knit. No, and I mean, it, and I, my sense is that would be like quite a complex one to set up. Like all of the work is in setting up this yeah. zip collar thing. But once you've done that, I think it'll fly. The other thing is, and not to hate on it more, <laughs> but, here we go. but you guys know how I feel about merino in general. I love Australian merino. This is a very rustic we, yeah. merino. It was before I really kind of felt a lot of knitting for olive, and I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but it's not my favorite merino. Like when I get merino, I want it to feel luxurious. This feels like a cheap Aussie merino to me. It just it just doesn't feel like merino. It no. feels like a like it's a, a very coarse merino, which I know is the style of it. I know, which I know. is nice, but also. But I wanted something soft. Like when you give someone a handmade jumper, they're not like, mm, "This is so nice and rustic." They're like, "Oh my gosh, this is so cuddly and crazy." It should have gone baby alpaca or something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's fine. I'm gonna knit it. It's gonna be great. Gonna be great. I'm gonna block it. I'm gonna put so much wool wash on it that it's gonna be <laughs> so cuddly and smell so good. And I will have so much arthritis in my hands because I'll probably leave it to the last minute to finish it off, but that is okay. And it's a good um, study project actually because I'm watching lectures and it's a very easy. Like a mindless. Yeah. Thing. And actually, you know what I will say? Mm. I read a little bit into the pattern because of the drama that I went through. And it's such a cool construction. Have I told you? I'm, I No, you haven't. I'm intrigued though because like, so, I've seen sort of similar. It's very cool. Constructed things. It's very cool. 
So you knit the collar first and you start off with a Judy special cast off. Yeah. Or cast on, magic. sorry. Magic. Yeah. Judy's, I kept saying Jenny's magic cast off, which I know it's her stretchy cut. I don't know. Anyway, Judy's, Judy's one, the Judy one, the Judy the magic, magic one. cast on. Yeah. Um, so you start off with Good. that and then you knit only on one side of it in rib. Yeah. And then when you finish doing the amount, which yeah. is the foldable amount yeah you then knit them together and then knit the body but then yeah. you leave five stitches on hold on either side and that ends up becoming the facing for the zip oh nice nice and then you knit in the flat to create the split for the zip mm, mm, mm. and then you go into the like split arms go into the round and then there's like raglans on the arms and stuff yeah cool, cool. so it's like quite like a quite satisfying up. clever pattern but just gotta get there i feel like jacob is quite knit worthy like you made in that beautiful scarf yeah, he is knitworthy. He he yeah, he loves the scarf. Also, his whole family is like obsessed with all the things that I knit and I think it's really sweet. They're like, Oh my gosh, I've got a pattern to it and I'm like, Yeah, I can do more than just got stuck in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite nice. So oh, yeah, that's nice though. I'm excited. I'm excited to have it um like properly established. I think once established, I think you'll have a great time. Anyway, negative Nelly out the window. Now it's your turn. Let's talk about Let's it. Let's talk acquisitions. Finally, what we've all been waiting for, particularly me. Um, I got... That's cute. This is a, a, just like a project bag. I got I love Guatemala. It. It's so cute. Which is lovely. Um, I think these are offcuts of something bigger that was woven into this. And then I bought... Nice colours. There wasn't a lot of yarn. I don't think Mexico's a big knitting... I don't get I the sense... I wasn't sure. No. Yeah. But I bought one 100 Ooh. grams gain of wool oh my gosh this is so cool yeah so it's naturally dyed so cool. with something that i didn't understand because i don't speak very much spanish <laughs> um but it's i know giving it's giving turmeric it's not turmeric it's some sort of plant that they have there but it's a, it's a beautiful turmeric color it's a single ply it's quite variable um i'm just i don't even know what i'm gonna make with it probably a beanie i think it'd be enough for a beanie a beanie i mean it's not enough for a vest but a chunky vest would be really cool would be nice yeah and i mean i was only kept going traveling with carry on so i had to yeah, be really frugal. very impressed <laughs> yeah for four weeks that was an interesting life choice anyway um it's oh perion that's what that's ah. what the dye is it's some sort of plant that they have there Cool. Um, but yeah, they had there was this one little store and they were just selling naturally dyed yarns with like cochineal bugs, which makes red and indigo and so some sort of green. Cool. It was really cool. Um, but I learned this really cool the thing that fiber itself is there's the 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 area where I bought this from. They like borderline worship sheep <laughs> because they. I mean, same. <laughs> I was like, these are my people. No, because I went there and they were like, sheep are so precious, they don't eat sheep because they appreciate that the sheep are important for making wool, which is a big component of their clothes. And so, like, they're the most protected animal. And if you killed a sheep, you'd be, like, ostracised from the community. Wow. And they don't eat, they don't eat lamb or anything. So um, interesting. Yeah, and I was like, these people have the right attitude to... I like it. ...sheep. I like it. It smells like quite nice. Too. Oh, I just, that's a, is that a weird thing for me to say? I, it probably just smells like my bag. <laughs> no. Because I was stuffed, I bought it quite early in the trip and then I just had to keep stuffing it down the bottom of my backpack. No, I feel like it can smell like it smells like herbaceous or something. Anyway, maybe it's just me. I'm cool. just going crazy. Maybe that's, yeah. Anyway. But um, it was really fun to find this yarn and I don't even know. I mean, it's, I think working out what's going to be a good needle size. It's really a 5.5. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 5.5. I'll have a play. Looks great. But this is my one like uh, acquisition from my trip. That's so cool. I'm not going to lie, I'm so excited for when I travel next year to get lots of acquisitions. I'm excited for you to send me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> totally. An IUD beneficiary. I have one more thing to show. <gasps> Go, I'm excited. Okay, so this oh only, I only I got this this morning. Every time you say that, I get like <laughs> a little high. I thought I, this only came to me this morning, so like. um. Okay. <laughs> I bought five balls of... <gasps> Where did you get this? Okay. So... Wait, I'm sorry. Did you make an order without me? Because no, 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 no. I want the alpaca. No. Okay, so... Hurry. Tell me quick. Okay. <gasps> I actually really like... I love this. This reminds me of the stuff that you missed out on when we were at the show. The Bella City Dye Works, like... Oh, know. yeah, yeah, Not yeah. Not the yeah. colour. Anyway, continue. Okay. I'll try. So, basically, I really wanted to buy this book. Oh! Oh! <laughs> 
Um, I consider, so consider me influenced. Um, I've been eyeing this off for so long because there's been quite a few people who own this book and keep making patterns out of it. All right, we're just going to stop the podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> we just like deep dive into it. Um, namely, Inga and Anna Passi Trevino both have it and they both keep making things out of it. And I was like, I want this book. It was, but to get it shipped to Australia was going to cost me like $50 in shipping. And to buy it, you had to buy five balls of something from Saturn Star. How random. Like, I think that's just the rule that they... That's the rule. <laughs> that's the rule. Um, so I was like, I'm going to buy just some random, not too expensive stuff, mainly so I can get the book. And I got it shipped to my friend's house who's living in London at the moment. This was, and I bought this six months ago. And it's you just been... so hard. It's just been sitting at her place this whole time. And then she had a friend, she had like, we had a mutual friend who went to visit her and she brought it back for me and dropped it off at my house this morning. So I got like free, oh, like local so cool. London postage. Uh, but it, like, I didn't want to make a big order because, which is why I was like, oh, I could, could get you involved and get and make it a big thing. But yeah, yeah. Um, I was a bit nervous about how much space was going to be. No, 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 no. I, I totally get it. I totally get it. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's just like a secret. No, it wasn't a secret order. But I was like, I can't believe she did a secret order. A I contraband did. order. <laughs> I just like, I just wanted this so much. I was like, I don't even know when I'm going to get it. Because I just ordered it to her place. I'm like, maybe it'll be a year before. Sorry, it right, makes I'll sense. definitely have a little flip. Um, but I bought five balls of the Frittiskan yarn. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's this is like the ultimate cool girl vibe. Can you see? I love it so much, and it's got a really, I really I'm like. I'm so excited. I'm definitely, it's... I'm definitely making. Right, like. Just so you know. <laughs> Isn't it so? I'm so excited. Anyway, this came for me this morning, um, but you had to buy five balls. So I bought five balls of this frigate scarf, and I'm going to make the no, make. the double toffler slippers. Know. Which are the ones that Inga oh, yeah. from the Traditions makes all the time. Yes. Um, um, because I was like, have to buy five balls. This will work. And then I can try out that pattern, which is a free one, which I know Inga is very kindly translated on one of her videos. Um, so I got five balls of this to make some double toffler socks. Nailed it. Thanks. I'm sorry. I'm just like dying over this stuff. Yeah. I told you, you should have shown this to me before you came <laughs> onto the podcast. There's some like real cool stuff. Here. Yeah. There's like, like a like just little, little like little, little features, little little details. Oh my gosh, there's so much to love. Mm -hmm. I really like the one which is like kind of similar to the ranunculus. This one. Oh, I actually like this better. Okay. I like this one better. Controversial. The ranunculus in this stunning. Stunning. I'm excited. That's gonna be like maybe a spring make for me. I think. I'd like in that lemon yellow color mm. too. <gasps> Look how light. It's pretty. I do love the dresses too, but I'm just so overwhelmed by how the rest is all pattern. Um, I'm a little overwhelmed by how long it would take me and like carrying it around. Can I just say I'm definitely making this? I know this is basically what I'm making for my partner right now, but you I guys love it. Matching. But I love it in this color. Yeah, it's, it's like ski chic. Yeah, very. Anyway, that's my um, this is my little treat. Mm, little treat. Just what I needed after nice. being on holiday for another, another treat. Yeah, you're so right. Like really struggled through it. Yeah. Um, I have one uh, non-knitting craft thing that sure. I just wanted to mention. Yeah. Um, I made a few things to take on holiday with me, like I made I made two dresses and I made a top and I made a skirt. Wait, how? Oh, you don't have to do everything on a machine. No, I, 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 <laughs> I, I sewed some things. Yes. Um, and I just wanted to talk about probably like my unexpected winner of like the things that I made, which mm. is... It's like just, it's, it's a really, this is not going to show up very well. This is a really just straight cut, really super simple skirt, which I made in this like drapey linen. So it was really good for like scrunching small, um, but it's a fantastic pattern and it was perfect for holidays. It's below the knee. So if you're feeling a little bit like self-conscious about like if you're in a different country, but it's got a little leg slit. So you get a little bit of ventilation. It's <laughs> a little bit of air con. Yeah. Airflow. It's called the Donovan Skirt by Helen's Closet. Mm. It's like so super simple. It could be your first sewing pattern. Wow. It's really simple. Um, it's like just a nice flattering cut. Um, really, like, really simple and 
was the best thing I made for the trip. I wore it a lot. That's awesome. I'm just really happy with it. I just wanted to share a little sewing tidbit that is a, perfe Aww, it's a perfect thanks. pattern. Thanks so much for sharing. Uh, that is it. I'm out. You got anything else? No, no, that's me. Good. Oh, you with your new hair. Yeah, I got my hair cut and I'm like really feeling it. Um, thanks it's so much for watching and joining us. Uh, it's been a hot minute. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, it's always lovely to see uh, all the comments and tips that people leave for us, which turns into recommendations on how I can oh, salvage my knitting projects. 100%. And, you know, um, I'm not at the moment, probably, as you guys know, I have a lot of yarn, but I reckon there will be a point where we do like a big order from... Yeah, yeah. Glad Tokyo or something. Yeah. So if that's something you guys are interested in, any uh, let us know. Southern Hemisphere, any Australian people who yeah, want to get in who on just that. want to get in. Um, what else? No, it's just it's really nice like seeing the comments and seeing how you know much you guys like the videos and also love knitting. I feel like sometimes I feel like a bit dorky here in Melbourne when there aren't that many people who actually like it, and it's kind of refreshing to see lots of other people, people around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah there yeah. are people out there like us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool. All right. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Is that you making tea?